everyone, welcome back. Um, if you watched my other steam engine videos, I had mentioned I was going to be making a double acting engine. And I would explain to you the differences between the double acting and the single acting. So, here it is. As you can see, it looks a little different from the single acting engines. Here's a single acting engine. As you can see, there's only one set of ports on the back, and I'll explain why. I'll set this aside. Let me take this off. Okay, so we have one hole, which is the steam port, on a single acting. And what that does is the air comes in that hole, or the steam, and it pushes the piston down. That action spins the flywheel and then the momentum of the flywheel the stored energy of the flywheel pushes it back up and then the steam pushes it back down and then you get that wobble action going on okay so it only has two holes on the top and one's going to be the um, input and one's going to be the exhaust and that's a single acting engine so it's only acting on the one hole pushing the piston down so the the uh, bore does not go all the way through the cylinder bore does not go all the way through and it's open on the bottom so that's basically the workings of a single acting let me put this away and I'll show you the double acting so right off the bat you can see that there's more holes on the upright in the double acting and the reason for that is and I'll show you right here I have just this little piece of hose connecting it and I'll explain why so that is actually two holes in a double acting and what happens is the steam will come in push the piston down and then the steam goes into that hole and pushes the piston back up so you get a nice smooth action and you can get this to go very very slow now in order to make a cylinder like this you have to have a head so I'll show you, I'll take this off and I'll show you how I made this and you have to have I guess sometimes they call it the packing head or the bottom head to capture the piston and not let the air come flying out the bottom so that's the main differences you have two steam inputs um, and then you have the heads that are blocking uh, the top and then the bottom of the cylinder. The rest of it, the difference is now instead of having just two holes on the upright, you're going to have four. And I use, made these holes the same way I explained in the other videos with a, a transfer punch. Okay. Now this one does have an aluminum um, crank here, and I used a uh, one eighth by one inch piece of aluminum. This is a three inch, I'm sorry, a three quarter throw. So we have three eighths from the center of the crankshaft to the center of the crank pin. Okay. And this is again using fender washers that I just filed down on the uh, drill press. Left kind of a nice little pattern with the file in there. And as you can see, very, very smooth. I mean, there's very, very little. You have to have a little bit of play because obviously it can't be too tight. But this is extremely smooth. Now, what I had to do here was I have to connect these two inputs. So I chose this to be the input and these to be the exhaust. I could have piped the exhaust also and then reversed it to make it go in reverse. But I chose not to on this one. But so now I have to connect these two air holes. Uh, inputs and that's what this little piece of hose comes in okay now you could do this internally but you'd have to drill a hole straight down here to connect these two internally okay and then you would um, you wouldn't drill the hole all the way through here or you would um, plug it and then just have a pipe sticking out the top um, or you could drill all the way through plug the top and have a pipe coming out the side um, I'll put a link in for Mr. Pete uh, video to show you how to do it but the the tricky tricky part for this without having a lathe of course um, is making this cylinder 
So I'll show you how he did it. These are 440 screws. And in order to make the head, what I did was I drilled a hole and I used my um, tubes and I soldered them up and I made basically the little lip that's needed. Now this cylinder probably could have been a little bit shorter, maybe a quarter inch shorter, but it is what it is as I made it. So I left it, it worked great, and I didn't want to mess around with it. But as you can see, that fits perfectly. Um, I'm not sure if it'll show up, but I actually lined this cylinder with a brass tube that's exactly the size of the piston. So um, it fits really great. This fits really great. You know, um, I could have put four but I didn't feel it was necessary. There's not a lot of pressure in there. So we got the top. Let me take out the bottom. And these are 440 um, screws. And there's your piston. Just a little quarter inch piston. And as you can see, it's captured in the bottom. And everything has to work perfectly with this one. Uh, you have to make sure that there's no binding, that this moves freely. And it was a little tricky, but uh, I got it to work. I'm not sure if that'll show up in there. You can see the inside of the brass. But uh, to drill these holes and tap them was a little tricky, but it all came out great. And, and this is essential. This, this is probably one of the most important holes besides the bore. To get um, it has to be perpendicular to the face of this so you get a good seal so basically that's the double acting the two holes um, and then you have to make the heads so uh, let me get this back together and I'll show you this thing in motion all right let's get this bad boy going As you can see, they run way better than the single action. Let's see if I can slow this one down. That's going pretty slow. Check that out. And that's the advantage of the double action. You can get it to go pretty slow. Get a little friction from that hose. Check that out. All right, folks. So I'm, I'm working on a few other things, like some manifolds and stuff. I may show you a little later on video. But again, everyone, you know I appreciate your views and I appreciate your comments and. I hope you enjoyed watching these little uh, steam engine videos and I hope you're having a great day and we'll catch you on the next one.